Before you can fly in formation, you have to know how to get into formation. This is accomplished by the original rendezvous. Before taking off, a landmark is selected where the planes will meet. Traveling at 115 knots and at a predetermined altitude, you will rendezvous in this manner when you arrive at the rendezvous point. When the leader is directly over the point of rendezvous, he begins a left 30-degree angle of bank turn. At the completion of 180 degrees of turn, the distance from the point becomes the radius of the rendezvous circle and can be maintained with about 15 degrees of bank. It is necessary, however, for the leader to vary his degree of bank slightly in order to maintain a circular pattern around a geographical point, under all except no wind conditions. The first plane to arrive directly over the point is the leader. He begins his 30 degree angle of bank turn. The second plane rendezvous by entering the rendezvous circle and heading directly for the center of it. After determining the leader's position from him, and when directly over the center of the point, he commences a rapid left turn and continues it until he has the leader on a 45 degree bearing to the starboard of his heading and is within the sector made up by a 225 degree and a 255 degree relative bearing from the leader. The closing relative motion commences at this point and should be continued until he is in position to join up. Pausing momentarily on the inside of the leader, he crosses under to right echelon. The third plane follows the same procedure. Here is the CV rendezvous used by the Navy as the quickest means for planes to join up after leaving a carrier. To simulate planes taking off, a right echelon will be broken and a column formed in this manner. After giving the breakup signal, the lead plane breaks to the left in a 45 degree bank, 180 degree turn, holding his altitude constant. After five seconds, at which time the leader will be a beam of the second plane's left wing, the second plane gives the lead to the third plane and also goes into a 45 degree bank, 180 degree turn, being sure to do. Five seconds later, when the second plane is a beam of the third plane's left wing, the third plane makes the same turn. The angle of bank may be varied during the last 30 degrees of turn in order to line up directly behind the leader. It is important that all planes maintain their altitude during the turn to ensure a proper interval in column. Once in column, all planes should use throttle to adjust their airspeed to 115 knots and the wingmen should adjust their altitude to that of the leader by placing him on the horizon. The leader maintains his new heading for 10 to 12 seconds, then begins a 180 degree turn to the left with 15 degrees of bank. When the leader bears 30 degrees off the second plane's port bow, the second plane makes a steep left turn, which he holds until the leader bears 45 degrees from him on his starboard bow. At the same time, positioning himself within the 225 to 255 degree relative bearing sector from the leader. He holds these respective bearings as he closes on the leader. When the third plane has the leader 45 degrees from his port bow, he too makes a steeply banked turn and closes on the leader in the same manner. Remember to keep all aircraft ahead of you in sight at all times. As the second plane closes on the leader, he pauses momentarily on the inside, then crosses under, moving into right echelon. The third plane does the same, waiting if necessary on the inside until he is assured that the second plane is moving into his position. You are third plane in a right echelon. The leader gives the CV breakup and rendezvous signal, passes the lead to his wingman, blows a kiss and starts his 45 degree bank, 180 degree turn. After five seconds, when the lead plane is a beam of the second plane's left wing, he passes the lead blows a kiss and begins his 45 degree bank, 180 degree left turn. Five seconds later, you follow, making sure you maintain your altitude. Completing your turn, you will still be 10 feet stepped down. Throttle should be used at this point to adjust airspeed and altitude to the leader. The leader holds his heading for 10 to 12 seconds after completing his turn. Then starts a 15 degree bank, 180 degree turn to his left. 
When the leader bears 30 degrees off the second plane's bow, the second plane commences a steep left turn. When the leader is 45 degrees off your port bow, you make a steep left turn, holding it until the leader is almost 45 degrees off your starboard bow. And you are in a 225 to 255 degree relative bearing sector from the leader. At this point, reduce your angle of bank sufficiently to commence a smooth, controlled rate of closure. Keep these bearings as you close on the leader. Don't wait until in position to cross under to take your step down. It should be taken as soon as you are close enough to recognize it. Remember, keep all planes ahead of you in sight at all times. After closing the leader, the second plane hesitates momentarily, then crosses under and behind the leader into his position in the right echelon. You follow the same procedure, flying opposite your proper position for a brief moment on the inside of the turn and then crossing under to the right echelon. With practice, this maneuver can be done with constant power setting. But if at any time you find yourself falling back, add full throttle to catch up. If through misjudgment the second plane has fallen back, you wait on the inside opposite your wing position until he catches up. Then cross under as he is assuming his position. keep your eyes on your leader for any signals he may give. Here he is signaling that he is giving the lead to the second plane. The pilot of the second plane acknowledges the signal by patting his head and pointing to himself. And the pilot of the lead plane moves out 10 feet, drops down 20 feet below the second plane. Falls back to a position opposite you. and moves in 10 feet and comes up 10 feet to make a V formation. The old leader must not take his eyes off the new leader at any time during the lead chain. The parade four-plane division is composed of two two-plane sections. The number one man is the division leader. The number three man, the section leader. Bearings, step-downs, and distances from plane to plane are the same as in three-plane work. To form an echelon to the right, the number two man describes an arc as he flies across. At the bottom of the arc, directly aft of the leader, he has stepped down 20 feet. To then form left echelon, the number two plane flies back across first. then follows, using throttle as necessary to maintain nose-to-tail distance. 